date set. This is where you set the date and time of the scope. Once set takes effect immediately, which you can see it at the top left corner of your scope screen. Mind you, when you do recording with cursor type, common and BDC radical, the date and time of the period gets recorded as well. I feel important to mention this. Bright. Allow you to remotely change the brightness setting of the screen and the image. Essentially, the remote control of the brightness key. The brightness level is from 0 to 4, so mid will be level 2. Noise reduction. It's an algorithm built in the scope computer which is able to enhance user viewing experience under low background light situation. Bit like some of the smartphone has super night photo mode for taking photo at nighttime. The trade-off of this feature is it creates a bit of drag to the image, which is easily noticeable when you sway the scope from side to side. When default at auto, this feature turned on when the scope sends the background light is very low. A bit like some smartphone auto adjust the screen brightness according to the surrounding light strands. For people who are dealing with the stationary object or slow moving object, you can even default the feature on to avoid any confusion. But if you're dealing with fast moving object where image dragging is something you absolutely want to avoid, please turn it off. Video quality and video lens. I have actually discussed about these two in the last video, but let's go through them again. The quality of the scope recording is always default at low quality. You can change it to medium or high quality recording here in the app. The quality difference between low, median and high, unfortunately I can't give you a quantified number. It's a compression ratio sort of relationship where high quality has lower compression ratio and vice versa. Also be aware if you force shut down your scope while recording for whatever reason, you will get a corrupted file, meaning you will lose this clip. So I tend to cease recording after a little while and start a new one. Again, things always happens. This is also where the video lens setting comes in handy as a backup. Say if you set 10 minutes, what it does, it asks the device to generate a new video clip every 10 minutes. So if you've been recording for 15 minutes and for some reason a system crash happened, your first 10 minute recording should still be safe. Frequency. You have two options, 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Normally, it's default at 50 hertz and you don't need to touch it. However, when you're using the scope while charging or using the scope while strong electronic magnetic interference exists in the environment, like if you're close to a substation or transformer, there is a chance you will see strips rotating on the screen or so-called flickering. Due to these given conditions, in this case, you can change the frequency to 60 Hz and that might eliminate that problem. I've heard some people actually would just default 60 Hz to begin with. I don't think there's any side effect, but most likely you don't need to deal with this matter anyway. Cursor color. Literally is your crosshair or radical color. You've got a hefty nine color choices at your disposal. Not only it satisfies your personal preference options, but more importantly, it adapts to different display environment better. You would want your radical to always stand out during observation, but with a digital scope, oftentimes black radical isn't ideal. My personal favorite so far is red, works out well for me, but you may find other color excel for your need. I do wonder which one of you naughty boy or girl would choose the exotic yellow or pink. But all jokes aside, take a look yourself, they actually stand out quite well. Both valid options. Cursor type. This lets you remotely change your radical slash crosshair of the scope or save it as default. None is just a plain empty screen. 
simple is just a plex reticle common is plex reticle with additional information displayed BDC reticle is when it's in-house BDC reticle with additional information displayed each has its merit I'll leave you to explore the possibility bottom backlight this setting allow you to default bottom backlight on or off during the use of the scope as I mentioned in the previous video each time you press some keys on the keypad that on the scope the whole keypad will glow for roughly 8 seconds for the purpose to notify you that you have touched the keypad whether you intend it or not also the backlight is helpful for you to view what keys you are actually pressing in case you are doing this in the middle of the darkness now if you look at the options you have on off and auto the auto option is the one that glows for eight seconds the on option is actually backlight always on and the off option is for some people who want to minimize light emission and remain stealthy in the total darkness this is where you can turn the backlight off now let's go through a practical scenario go live on the phone I want the video quality to be high done we'll start a recording first oh by the way this is the recording key and this is the photo key slash screen dump key start recording okay good now I will change the sense setting on the scope which you will see it on the phone okay the noise reduction is currently off let's sway the scope a bit so you can see the normal Wi-Fi delay we mentioned earlier this is fast and this is slow okay now I will turn on the noise reduction so you can see the additional drag caused by the algorithm which creates further delay to the mirroring by the way the more complicated the background the higher the delay let's give it a go again this is fast and this is slow good I'll turn it off for now I will show you the cursor color let's try black green yellow and pink change the cursor type let's go with none and simple and BDC okay that will do let's cease the recording and take a photo done okay this recording and photo is now saved on the TF card but wait you can also download all the recordings and photos to your smartphone downloading speed is 
pretty fast in my opinion once download you can choose to view in the app or in your phone's local gallery let's just download a photo and um, let's show you okay there And uh, there it is. That concludes the practice. Now, just a bit extra salt. Let's say if there are three people involved in this occasion, one person directly operated the scope two companions mirroring the scope through their own smartphone or tablet. Here we need to understand the fact that not only the scope user able to input control to the scope, the other two app users also have some control over the scope. Think of the scope as a vintage TV that has keypad on its frame, but also came with two remote controls. Some key only available on the TV frame and some keys only available on the remote control and the other common keys are available on both with first come first serve basis so if you want to watch the movie channel with low sound volume but your friends want to watch the sports channel with high sound volume you lots are going to fight each other and give the poor tv a real hard time to avoid that best to communicate and set some arrangement prior or simply ask your friend please do not touch any settings and this concludes the main feature of the apps, besides the ballistic calculation function which I should be able to discuss in the next video. If there are any updates to the app, I'll leave notes in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed it and find it useful. Take care, bye for now.